Before beginning maintenance, or at the end of each workday, you want to begin by hitting the stop on the machine power. Next, you want to hit shut down system on your main screen. Now that it's safe to turn off your computer, you want to come back down and turn off the control circuit. And also, before beginning maintenance, you want to make sure to turn off both your power cabinets and make sure to lock out and tag them out. Before beginning the maintenance, you'll also want to shut off your air supply. And don't forget to lock out and tag it out. So when greasing the bearings, you'll want to make sure it's done every 3,000 cycles. Here we have our back section ball rail, which will move your lock bore location. One here, one here, and then here's the last one on the end of the ball rail. For the width adjust for the back section, it has four bearings, two on the left, two on the right, one in back, and one in front. The back section shift also has four bearings, two per side, one on the bottom, one on the top. So for your bolt drill, there's four bearings, two per shaft. You'll want to just push it out and you'll have access to them. On your bottom face bore, it'll be connected to two shafts behind it. Each has two bearings. On the top face bore, you'll have four bearings, two on the left, two on the right. On the six shooter ball screw shift assembly, there's also three, one here, here, and here. On each door stop assembly, there's two bearings per side, one in the front and one directly behind it. On our six shooter assembly, right under the hopper stand, we have bearings on a shaft, and there'll be three of them, one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right, and the Zerk fittings will be pointing towards the back section. Since the top bore is driven by a belt and a shaft, we have three bearings, one on the top, one in the middle, and one under. For the six shooter Y-axis vertical assembly, we have two rails and they each have two bearings per side, one on the bottom, one on the top. On the six shooter Z-axis, we have four bearings, two per rail, one in the front and one behind it. So for the routers themselves and including the chisels, they each have two bearings, one in front, one in back. For the chisels, the Zerg fittings will be on the left side for the left chisel, right side for the right chisel, and for the pre-drill, counter router, and router themselves, they'll be in the front, and those will actually be interconnected with the bearings to the back. For the router heads, there will be four bearings for the horizontal shift. One on top, one on bottom, and same on the opposing side. For the vertical, there will be four bearings, two per rail, one on the top and one underneath it. So under the router heads, we have the Y-axis ball rail bearing, and there will be a Zerg fitting on the bottom and the top. Under the router heads, we also have Zerg fittings for the X-axis ball rail, which will be here here and here and under the router heads Z axis we have a bearing here and one in front the router head X axis also has four bearings two per rail one here one in front of it 
The router head's Z also runs on a rail bearing, which is two per side, one in the front and one in the back, but please remember to refer to the owner's manual for all greasing locations. When it comes time to change out your screwdriver bits, you want to simply turn off your air valves, push forward a hair, slide that over to give you more room to access the bit, pull your truck back, pull forward on the bit, comes out, get your new bit, bring it back in, pull the truck back, slider on in, and then make sure to push forward, pull that back, and then don't forget your air. So if you notice the cuts on your door or jam aren't as clean as you'd like, more than likely you'll have to change out your router bits. So for example, I will change out the counter router. Simply put your tooling on, break it loose, pull out the old bit, Grab your new bit, and also you'll want to grab our main jig. It'll be located on top of your Maytag, and this will bring you to a close depth. So we'll put that on there. Tighten it up. And then we'll go into the calibration screen and make any adjustments needed. Now with our new tool in, we'll want to come to our calibration screen. Since it was on head one and it was the counter router, depending on the depth of your cut, because it's more than likely not going to be perfect, if it's too deep, you'll want to use your Z-axis and go negative to pull towards you. And if it's too shallow, you'll want to just go positive to go deeper in the cut. When it's time to change out your bolt drill, you simply want to grab your tooling, put it in there, break the collar loose, and simply take out your old tool, bring back your new bit, and when you put it in, the depth's not too important. You just don't want it bottoming out. And always make sure to grab your wrench and tighten it very tight. When it's time to change out your faceplate router, you want to loosen these bolts, completely take them out. They are size 916. Grab your router, bring it out. And you'll simply take your tooling, hold here, loosen that collar, take your old tooling out, bring your new tool in, and a crucial piece of this is you'll want the bit sticking out 52 millimeters from the collar to the top. Doesn't have to be exact, but a neighborhood number is very nice. The reason for that is so it clears this plate right here. Simply put your tooling back, and then reassemble, retighten your bolts. After you have your torret set to where you want, we have it set in silver for three degree, one inch. But if you wanted to go to zero degree, all you'd have to do is loosen these two bolts, which are nine sixteenths, slide back, and the longer bolt will be your zero degree and the short bolt will be your three. And then you'll simply slide the router forward and retighten your bolts. So when you have your router back together and it's all fitted up, 
you'll want to do a test run. And if your depth is too deep, you'll simply crack this bolt loose, which is a half inch, adjust this further forward to compensate for that depth. And if it's not deep enough, you'll simply want to pull back on it and compensate for that depth. All right, so let's replace our top bore bit. You'll want to start with taking off this dust collection cover. There'll be four 532 size bolts. So when you're ready to change your bit, we got our dust collection off. And you'll want to grab your tools, break it loose. Be careful because the bit will fall. So we'll just carefully take that out. And slide it on out. And there's no special depth with this. You simply want to just bottom it out on the collar and tighten that back up. All right, for the bottom bore, to change out the bit, we'll want to grab our tooling, park it right on the side right there, and loosen up our collar. Once the collar is loose, we can simply pull our bit out. All right, so with the collar loose, we'll grab our bit. Please be mindful, it's very sharp, so please be careful. All right, grab your new bit, and you'll simply want to just put it back in the collar. There is no designated height or anything for this. You'll want to just bottom it out on there. And then grab your tooling and retighten very snug. So at the end of each day, you'll want to just do a general blow off. Start with the eyes. And after you're done greasing your machine on the maintenance portion, you'll want to blow off the eyes also every 3,000 cycles.